if you are watching this, it must mean that the apocalypse did not happen after all, and we actually survived into 2013. Yeah, I know, the, the jokes have been kind of overdone here. We're, we're done with the apocalypse jokes right now. I'm sorry, Mayans. Actually, I'm sorry for the people who misinterpreted the Mayans, but we all knew that wasn't going to happen anyway. Whenever the next rapture happens, though, we'll be sure to be much, much more scared, because that must be when it's going to happen there. But in the meantime, for those of us who did survive into 2013, which is most everyone, we actually have to get back on track, because Cartoon News is finally back, and with a new year comes a new sequence. It is now Cartoon News 2013. Just to differentiate the years, because with the new year comes all sorts of new events coming up, and at the beginning of the year is when a lot of new things actually happen, or it's rather when studios kind of reevaluate what it is, what it is they're going to be doing for the next 365 days, because you kind of look back at what happened the last year and you think, okay, what did we do right? What should we do differently? And so, at the beginning of the year, we start to see studios start to make tweaks and changes that will effectively dictate their direction, hopefully for the rest of the year there. So that's kind of why the beginning of the year is so important. Not any more important than the rest of the year, but anyways, I'm getting off track there. So, now that the new year is well underway, and we are into January 2013, what has the Animation Studios of America been doing? Actually, a good chunk of things, really. One of the first things that is coming up is actually something that uh, we kind of knew was going to be happening anyways, but it's good to see that still going here. Easily DC's biggest contribution to society now is no longer their live-action movies or their comics even. It is easily their animated movies, the direct-to-video movies from the DC Comics line that Warner Brothers has been putting out there. And we got a new one coming up, actually. Yeah, coming in spring 2013, so coming up in a couple of months, we have Superman Unbound. It's going to be coming out there. I know it sounds so exciting, doesn't it? Well, the title's a little vague there, but it, it's a pretty basic story, actually. It's based on a 2008 storyline where you got two basic storylines. It's Superman versus Brainiac, which Brainiac's like the... kind of the more important villain, I think, to Superman, be, more than Lex Luthor is, because, you know, he actually destroys Krypton initially, for those who actually see that part. I'm going off cartoon logic here, but anyway, so Superman versus Brainiac, and then the other part is Superman going up against... Well, not up against, but kind of the... He's got women trouble, basically. He's got both Lois Lane and his, uh... Is it niece? Is it? I, I know, it's, it's Supergirl. It's, um... Yeah, it's, uh, his, um... Niece, as it is, or it's, a uh, No, no, it's a cousin. I'm sorry, it's a cousin. It's related there, right? I always get the relatives mixed up there, because you destroy the entire Krypton race, you'd think they'd be all gone, but they're not anyways. But anyway, so the... Actually, we've got the cast list announced here. For, for you white-collar fans out there... I'm not, but for you white-collar fans out there, Mr. Matt Bomer is going to be voicing Superman here. Not the typical Superman the Animated Series voice that we're used to, but a new voice for a different kind of Superman. So we've got him lined up there, we've also got John Noble from Fringe, who's going to be voicing Brainiac, and we've also got co-stars from Castle, the show Castle, not like they're in a castle, but anyway. <laughs> jokes, I know. Uh, Stana Kaddick and Molly Quinn are going to be voicing Lois Lane and Supergirl, respectively. So, the wider cast there, and given the fact that I have yet to be really disappointed in any of the DC uh, directed video movies, well, I I've been let I I've been less than impressed with some of them, but none of them have been bad. I mean, even the lesser ones like uh, Superman, Batman, Apocalypse have still been pretty good. And so this one, at least, you know, we're giving Superman a little more credit here, because he gets shafted a lot as Goody Two Shoes who doesn't have any conflicts in his life. Well, now he's got one. Well, he's got two actually. So look forward to that in the spring. And good for DC for continuing to release stuff. So that's what DC's doing. They're sticking to their guns in 2013. Now, what is Disney doing in 2013? Disney is doing something a little interesting, and um, it's actually something that I thought we wouldn't be seeing too much of until a little bit later in the years. Like not until 2014 at the least. I was wrong. Um, with the advent of digital releases nowadays, where you can just download a film or a series and have it on your personal hard drive, and you can carry it around in a mobile device, that's becoming a lot more popular these days, but Disney's taking it to the next level. What they're doing for Wreck-It Ralph, which came out last winter, like a couple months ago, and now is getting its video home video release, they're releasing Wreck-It Ralph on digital format before the physical DVD Blu-ray releases come out. 
Yeah, on February 12th, you can download the digital, like the high definition digital and the 3D digital versions of Wreck-It Ralph if you want the 3D version, but you can download that before the Blu-ray DVD combo packs come out, and that's going to be on March 5th, so almost a whole month before you can have the physical copy, you can have a digital copy, and this is, well, I mean, obviously it's going to make a lot of money because everyone buys Disney films, even the lesser ones, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure Brave sold a lot of discs, despite it being just a so-so Pixar film, but as far as this goes, it's interesting that Disney is jumping on the bandwagon of, let's release the digital films, let's release something digital before a physical release of it, which seems to be the direction anyway, because it costs less to release something digitally than on a physical disc, so let's just start pushing for that more and more. And as you see an increase in digital releases, you'll probably see a downgrading of physical releases, kind of like how once the DVD came out, the VHS got phased out. Now that the Blu-ray is out, the DVD is starting to get phased out. And now that digital is starting to come as well, the Blu-ray will probably also be phased out. Just That's just the way things are working. And Disney's jumping on that, like, now. They're, they're like, getting on it as soon as possible. Not a bad thing, just uh, something to keep an eye on there. Especially for people who like to collect physical copies of something, I'm not so sure how you're gonna take this. I mean, personally, I like to collect physical copies. I like to have the physical disc in my hand so I can put it in the physical player so I can press the physical play button. So it'll be, it'll be a weird. It, it's like how once I got a nook, it was a little weird reading a book on a tablet as opposed to reading physical pages. It, it just felt weird, but I don't think we're going to have a complete transition just yet. It will take a little while, about another year, maybe. I'm estimating about two or three years before a complete transition happens, but it's still something to keep an eye on there. Just know that it will happen. Maybe not as soon as we're fearing, but it will happen. So. Prepare for that. Whether you like it or not, digital releases are coming, and you cannot stop them. You cannot stop them. I am sorry. Also, because I also am kind of not wanting that to happen, but I can't do anything about it. All I can do is watch it happen from the sidelines. Speaking of things coming out that we weren't entirely excited for, well, some people were, but, well, it's a little unnecessary, but, okay, Monsters University is coming out this year, um, June 21st specifically, so yay for the summer months for Disney Pixar, and not everyone's excited for the prequel series to Monsters Incorporated, so some people are, right? I don't think it's gonna be that bad, I just don't, I, I can't see myself rushing to the theaters to see it, but maybe there is a good reason to go see it after all, because in addition to the feature film, which you may or may not like, I can almost guarantee that one part that will be worth watching is the theatrical film that comes before it, because we got new information about that film, which is going to be called Blue Umbrella, and it's actually a really cinematic depiction of two anthropomorphic umbrellas who, in the middle of a storm, are divided by the wind and obstacles and try to get back to each other, all in this really cinematic, almost anthropomorphized art style that's not really like anything we've seen Pixar do before. It's a bit of an oddity in it. Well, not oddity in itself, but it's a unique style. It, it's something they have not quite done before. Almost. Like, I know there was that one short they did really early on about the, the red unicycle, I think it was. It was like Red's Dream, I think, which anthropomorph anthropomorphized English is not my first language. Uh, objects that were not initially alive. but And so they're doing it now with umbrellas. Yeah, they're, they're depicting umbrellas coming to life, not coming to life, but blown about by the elements and trying to trying to get back together again in the greatest love story ever, or one of the greatest love stories ever. We all know what the greatest love story is, obviously. It was up, naturally. But this one looks like it'll be really fun to watch because the strength of Pixar's theatrical films has always, uh, the theatrical shorts, has always been unique, dialogueless narratives, and this one seems to be doing the same thing, where since the characters are unalive, they wouldn't have any dialogue, and so the fun is watching the movements of these objects kind of move around in a semi-realistic fashion. In fact, it looks like it's going to be really realistic. It was filmed in a very cinematic, very deep-layered style 
that tried to look less cartoony and more cinematic than some of the other Pixar shorts, according to what the director wanted to do on this one. And just the way it was put together looks like it'll be a lot of fun to watch, even for the like short six minutes that's put together there, which it should be. When you have a short film, you gotta work really hard to make it a lot more enjoyable than just a full theatrical film by itself. So. If you're gonna go see Monsters University, you may as well enjoy this as well. Which I, again, I, I kind of wish I could just go see this without having to go see Monsters University. Because, like I said, not doesn't look like a bad film at all. Just not something to go rush to the theaters to see. Go give my money and go see it. I think it'll be worth watching. But probably it will. Be, it will be worth watching. Just stick around. At least stick along long enough to watch the theatrical film at the beginning because it looks really good. Now, what is the final thing that is going on in the rest of the year? Well, it's kind of a competition, actually. The, the last thing of note here is the competition, the continuous competition between Warner Brothers and Disney in what they're both trying to do to one-up one another here. And they're actually doing really opposite things. It's kind of a double story here about what the two companies are doing to improve productivity and decrease uh, losses and profit. So, okay, what's Warner Brothers doing? The Warner Brothers company is increasing their animation output. In fact, while Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, Sony Animation have all been putting out films for the past five years or so, Warner Brothers is finally jumping back into the mix because they haven't really done a film since The Iron Giant. Yeah, think about that. Since the late 90s, Warner Brothers has not done their own animated feature. They've only released other animated features. They have not done one of their own. So, they're creating a think tank. Yeah, Warner Brothers is trying to recapture that termite Tarrant style of take creative people, throw them in a pit, and see what comes out of it. So, that's not a bad idea, actually. In fact, that's probably how some of the better ideas they've ever done have been created. And, like I said, the original Looney Tunes and the whole Merry Melody shtick was done by taking these creative animators and directors and kind of putting them in this termite-ridden area with a bunch of paper and cells and ink and say, okay, just go make us something. I don't care what it is, as long as it makes us money, just do it. And they did. They made the weirdest cartoons of the era, the wildest, off-the-wall, cartoonish stuff that redefined the entire medium. Not exactly sure that's what's going to happen now, because the I'm looking at the talent that they pooled for this think tank, and they've got well, some good resume here. I mean, they, they've got artists who worked on uh, Cats and Dogs, um, directors from The Muppets, writers from Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and Mr. Popper's Penguins. Okay, so it's kind of across the board. Some good talent there, but the fact that they're beginning been giving a little more free reign about what they're going to be allowed to do is good news, because like I said, nothing stirs the animator's talent quite like letting them just go crazy and work off the walls and do whatever they want here. Uh, but it does look to be a little more constrained than that. They're not going to release, like, Fritz the Cat Part 7 or anything too raunchy like that. It's meant to be family-friendly, restrained, in the same vein of everything that Disney and DreamWorks have been doing in the past few years anyway, which kind of bugs me a little bit, because, I mean, think about it, Warner Brothers has the reputation of creating some of the better cartoon characters from the 30s a long time ago, and this is an entirely new generation there, and even though they claim that we've revolutionized animation, I'm like, yeah, you did a long time ago. So, okay, what are they going to make? What's their first film in this big think tank operation to rejuvenate Warner Brothers Animation Studio? The Lego Movie! Yeah, they're gonna make a movie about Legos, because... Well, it's not gonna be unprofitable, I mean, we were all kind of hoping for that, but it kind of bugs me that it's gonna be a CGI film, and not those stop-motion, uh, moving characters you see on billions of YouTube videos. I'd much rather see that. I'd much rather see a stop-motion Lego film, as opposed to, let's CGI-ify them and do the same thing that they're doing on that Cartoon Network series, who I think some people are watching. I didn't, I don't know the appeal exactly, except... Oh my god, Legos, which, again, you, you should play with them, you should watch the movie, but uh, anyway, that's not the point there. Okay, so, okay, the Lego movie, that's one thing. Uh, what else could they possibly be working on? They're also working on, well, after that, they're going to be working on a film called 
Storks. Uh, no premise that, but it is being directed by the same guy who directed the Pixar short Presto, which, again, love the Portal-style physics on that one, so who knows what you could do with Storks. And also, an original film by the guy who came up with Despicable Me, called Smallfoot. Okay, I'm not being blown away by you, Warner Brothers, but at least you're trying. It's in the beginning stages here, so this is what to keep an eye on for Warner Brothers for this year. Just, they're trying. They're trying, but... I, again, I'm not blown away just yet. Maybe I will be. Maybe the Lego movie will be considered the Citizen Kane of CGI films when it comes out. I highly doubt it, but I'm not gonna blow it off just yet. But, I mean, give them a little bit of time. I, I just am a little worried that since... We've already got the family theatrical CGI film niche filled by Pixar and DreamWorks already. I don't really know what Warner Brothers is going to bring to the table that's different from that. Wh whatever it is, I mean, g give them a few films to maybe find their footing, but for now, we'll just step back and let them do what they want. And while they're doing that, what's Disney doing? Like, in, in, on the other side of things, what does Disney, the juggernaut of the animation theatrical market, want to do to increase their own revenue? Uh, they're actually doing the opposite. They're cutting costs. They're taking money out. Uh, they're cutting the money that they would be spending on technically unnecessary things. Well, okay, uh, it, this is rumors to start with. It's just uh, insiders whose names will remain unnamed for now, for their own safety. Just talking about the possibility that Disney may want to um, cut back on um, spending in some of the less profitable parts of their studios. They may put off a uh, hiring freeze so they don't you know, waste money on new people and just focus on the ones they already have. And really, that doesn't really surprise me. They're, they're very money-centric. Disney has always been that way. And if something's not making a lot of money, like... Uh, this is kind of the audience's fault, but it's also sort of Disney's own fault. Uh, John Carter last year lost a lot of money in the in Disney's theatrical film department, which is, uh, from what I understand, it's actually their least profitable section of their whole like mega billion dollar uh, market. Like I don't know how much my, I mean, it's profitable. It's just not as profitable as the rest of the studio is. So it would make sense that they would try to cut money in that section there. So. Yeah, I, I guess I can understand that, it's just, uh, we don't really know how this is going to affect any films in production, or any people who are currently working for Disney, just, if you were considering, like, interning at Disney or something like that, you might not get to do that right away, because they're kind of reevaluating their financial situation there, which, uh, given the fact that, um, I mean, well, oh, horrors of horrors, their, dr their stocks dropped last week. Now, a Disney share is only worth $50.97! Oh my gosh! Uh, no, it, it's not that bad. Well, okay, for Disney it's bad because they demand massive income, and which is why they re-re-re-re-release all their films every year. Okay, fine, so that's what Disney's doing. Apparently they feel the need to cut back on costs. No new productions as it is, but at least they're watching their money. At least they're not blowing money on stuff that's not going to be profitable. And given the fact that they just bought Star Wars, I'm sure they're going to be making lots of money on that sooner or later. So regardless of what Disney does, eventually they will find a way to make money. It is just in their blood. It will always make money. Just the name Disney makes money. So I don't think they have to worry about losing too much money as it is. Well, anyways, that's what they're doing back and forth there, and that's kind of the big news for the past week, the, the first week of the new year. So, yeah, that's pretty much all that uh, to keep in mind there. So keep in mind on uh, Warner Brothers Think Tank, go see the new DC animated film, the Superman Unbound, and definitely get the, the Dark Knight Returns Part 2 that's coming out later this year as well. I really want to see that, because it looks really good, and I also have to finish it because I have the first half, so I should definitely watch the second half. And more than anything else, Disney always earns money. They will always have money, no matter what they do. There's nothing we do about it, so salute to you, Disney, for always making money. Yay for you, and a happy 2013. Yay!